Okay, how to uh, do diagnostics on contactors. Here we've got a three-pole contactor, a two-pole contactor, and a single-pole contactor. The difference in these is we've got three sets of points in this one. Uh, we'll call it points. You can call it whatever you like. Show you what we've got here. So the uh, this gets voltage sent on this side. This is a 24 volt coil. So you can see on this label here, we've got it's see here three pole. 24 volt rated at 30 amps yep so we've got three contact points and then your 24 volts comes in the bottom here so this is where you would check for 24 volts and then you'd have each conductor you'd have a line side and a load side i don't think it really matters which side you make line or load it doesn't it's going to transfer through or the electricity is going to conduct itself through either way a two pole contactor has two sets of contacts and this is a 24 volt coil it's all your ratings on the side so when you're checking things make sure you see what voltage is needed for the control side so you know what you're checking for and what it's rated for. So on this one, the low voltage, the 24 volts is gonna come in here. So this is where you would check for 24 volts. Okay. And this is a single pole contactor. I'm just taking these covers off to show you what they look like inside. Uh, same thing, same, it's basically the same thing as this. It's just single pole. This is also 24 volt coil, which means it needs 24 volts here on any of these contactors to pull this point down, this contactor in, whatever you want to call it. And then there's a metal bar here, a conductor. The power is constantly coming through here. So this does have two poles, but only one of them has a contactor in it. And we refer to it as a single pole contactor. I'm gonna put these back together. We're gonna apply some voltage to these so I can show you how they work. All right, so We've got this contactor set up now. So if you're out in the field and you want to check a contactor, first off, you want to make sure you've got your, for what we're doing right now, make sure your voltmeter sets to, or set to alternating current for voltage. Um, if you're having an issue getting basically you're checking the contact or whatever reason is uh, we want to make sure we've got 24 volts coming in calling for the contactor okay so that signal should be sent uh, from whatever's controlling it usually it's the thermostat for residential HVAC we got 24 volts there that means that this contact should be pulled in and then we want to make sure we're getting our uh, voltage coming through we're gonna call this the line side. This is where the power is coming in that's being supplied to whatever this contactor is controlling. Usually on condensers, it's the compressor and the condenser fan motor. Uh, sometimes air handlers have them uh, controlling the heat strips. And then those points come in. When there's 24 volts here, they let the voltage through from this side to this back side here and I guess we need to get a better view of that. All right. And um, 
I've only got 110 volts here, so I basically got the same voltage running to each side here. Uh, that's not a concern right now because the same same principle for checking this applies. So what voltmeters do is check a difference in the voltage between the two points. So if we check this to ground, which ground is off screen over here, we're getting 63 volts. And that means there should be no difference coming through. So we should have 63 volts on this side and we should have 63 volts on this side. So there's only a 0 0.001 difference there. So this is a great contact in here. There's uh, no buildup, no corrosion, nothing that's preventing the electricity from flowing through that pole. Uh, so there's no need to replace this. Same thing on this side, same reading. And this is a brand new contactor. So uh, I say when you get up to about 1% uh, of the voltage in a drop, so if this was 110 volts on this leg, if you're getting a uh, more than one or two volt drop between each side, I'd say it's either time to clean the contactor or replace it. Uh, some people go more, that's just the way that I do it. And that is how you check a contactor. And the same principle applies for the single pole and the three pole. You're just verifying the uh, coil voltage is there and that there's no voltage, significant voltage drop across each pole. Um, sometimes I've seen uh, on bigger commercial units, the coil will be 120 volt, 240 volt, so you'll be checking for 240 volts on the control side or 110 or whatever that it is that the contactor specifies or the equipment manufacturer specifies. That's what you'd be checking for. Please click the subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed this video.